right time for me to start painting. I've got my canvas set, uh, you know, when I finished the drawing in the last video. I've got my photo reference here. I'm gonna refer to it a lot. When you see me paint, you'll see me turn to uh, use this a lot to refer to color and also to the drawing to make sure my drawing stays accurate. A lot of times you'll see me step out of the frame like that, that means I'm probably stepping back about 15, 20, maybe 30 feet to view this painting from far. It's good to do it every so often, especially if you paint with a knife, which is a very impressionistic, blocky type style of painting. And what I like to do is like make it very, a lot of abstract type shapes, very blocky shapes when you look at it close up. But when you stand back, then all of a sudden you see the scene. It's like beautiful. Oh, now, now it looks like a, a building. It looks like trees or what, whatnot. These are the two knives I think I'll be using on this painting for the most part. They're basic palette knives or painting knives. So this is my favorite knife I use. And you can see how big it is compared to my hand. And then here's a much smaller version, which I can use for smaller details. I've got my palette set. It's going to be in a very extremely limited palette. So let's see what I have here. So starting here, I've got this Utrecht white. It's a blend of titanium white with a little bit of zinc white, a very good opaque white. And I'm sure this being a winter scene with a white building, I'll be using a lot of white. So I'm sure I'll be hitting uh, the tube for refills quite a bit. Um, I'm going to start up here. For my red, here's a red I've never used before. Quintus Cidrone Red by Utrecht. I usually use either a Lism Crimson and or a Cadmium Red Light. But I'm going to go for this one. It looks like it's kind of a neutral one. It, I rubbed a little bit on its own over here to see what it looked like. And it looks like it's maybe a, a little bit of a cooler red, which is, which is fine. Because it, you know, with a winter painting, it'll be a, the cooler red will work good if I want to make some like the purples and the snow. And when I make my oranges here, it'll make it more of a slightly duller orange than say a cadmium red, which is good because they're dead leaves. So I'm gonna give that a try. This is cadmium yellow light. It's a little bit of a warmer yellow. I've got some cerulean blue, which will be used mostly especially in the sky. And ultramarine blue, which is a blue that leans a little bit more towards purples, and I see me using that a lot in the shadows. This is burnt sienna, and when I mix that with ultramarine blue, that'll make like a very dark dark. And if I add white to it, a lot of good neutral grays. And what I want to do is figure out my focal point, and let's see if we go back to this drawing, I'm thinking it's gonna be like, you know, one of these windows over here, or perhaps the top of the roof. A part that'll catch the eye the most where I wanna get a good contrast between a white and a dark. And then from there, you know, hopefully your eye through the trees and that will be led to other areas of the painting. So I wanna make sure I get my focal point you know, established and then have everything else kind of support it have your eye get light around this picket fence. Hopefully we'll lead you around perhaps this tree to this limb. So ho hopefully you'll get like a circular or feeling of going around the canvas, including this tree that even, you know, makes you move around. And then stop. Hmm. You know, maybe this could be a good focal point, even though it's not in sunlight because everything seems to be going around it. So yeah, maybe this window here, because I definitely wanted a window to be a focal point because I want you to feel like you want to go inside this building. You see this beautiful house and you want to know what's inside and you want to go inside. So I'd like the focal point to be a window to make you feel that you want to go and in, in, be inside to see what's going on in there. Um, you'll notice on my palette I have no secondaries, no purples, oranges, or greens, even though you may see some in the painting. There's a little bit of purples in the snow, but I'm going to blend them using the ultramarine blue and the red. 
and oranges. Well, I don't need a bright orange. I can mix my own orange. I want it to be a dull orange because of dead leaves. And green, it's not a lot of green here. It's a, like a pine tree green. Okay, there's a green sign here and maybe some dull greens over there. And since I want the greens again to be more of a duller green, I, you know, I'll mix my own and you know, make them the way I want, grade them down a bit. And I think I'm gonna start, let's see, what I'm gonna start with is like, the, I, want to, I want to get my darks in. So I'll make, put, establish my darks in there and it'll probably be darker than it will be when the painting is finalized. But it'll give me my first layer down. And to me, the darkest darks, the shadows, are like, they form the structure of the painting. They're not the part of the painting that, you know, you enjoy looking at, the razzle-dazzle part. But they form, you know, they form a structure to your painting, the shadows and the darks. Um, almost like a house, if you go into someone's house, the part you enjoy looking at are the, the beautiful vases and decorations, a nice piece of the furniture. That's the part that catches your eye. But what really holds the room up are the walls. But, you know, the, the walls themselves aren't you know, necessarily interesting, but they hold the wall and then all the stuff on, on the walls and on the floors, that's what gets your attention. So I wanna get that structure in of the darks and I think I'm gonna start. All right. So to get a dark, like I said, you know, a good basic dark is just ultramarine blue. And I'll put some burnt sienna in it. Burnt sienna, is, it's a brown color, it's a reddish brown. When I mix it together, it makes a very dark color. If I have more blue than brown, it's a cooler dark. If I have more brown than blue, it's a warmer dark. And you can go get a basic neutral from it even. And if you add white to it, you can get a good neutral gray. The great thing about a palette knife is, well, one, I don't need solvents. Anytime I want to clean my knife, I just have to have a rag. So I'll keep that handy over here. Another thing is, it's got this nice sharp edge, which you can use to make a nice sharp edge to the window here, say. So I can go here, pull and drag it. And I get a nice sharp edge on that side. If I put some paint on the other side of the knife, I can go to the other side of the window. Look at that nice sharp edge I get from there. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of scraping noises when I start because there's no paint underneath it. So yeah, it's just a basic dark for now. And you know, I can always go into it later on to lighten it up, add some color to it. There, I can help establish this post or pole. Again, it, again by putting that flat edge against it. Yeah, so let's get these darks of all the windows first. Ooh, I got a little bit too much down there. That's all right. I can. Go over that later on. There's a little bit of a dark here. So I'm establishing my windows. This one has a lot more reflection from the light, so I guess I don't need too much of that. Let's see, where else am I there? Now there's darks. Like this railing but i'm going to put that at the end as one of the details so i'm not going to stick that in right away so what else could you use some uh, this is i just this is a uh, darkest dark something to use for the window i don't want to use this for anywhere else as is but i see some i want to get the darks in for the trees so the trees are green so let's make a green right now i'm going to take some ultramarine blue and some yellow And 
and yeah, I got a nice green there. Now for the darker shadow areas, I'm gonna add the complementary to the green, which is red. So let's take some of this red and see what we get from there. Wow, that red's a strong one. So I think I'm gonna, it's gotten too red. Let's get some blue in there. I want to darken it because I want it to be the shadows of the tree. But I want it to be a different color dark than this. So it looks like it's more of a greenish brown. So yeah, that might be good for the darks of the tree. So let's just get some of that dark in here. I mentioned earlier, it's a week before Christmas or six days before it. I'm playing some Ukrainian, no, I'm sorry, excuse me, some German Christmas carols. I'm of German and Ukrainian descent, so that'll, I'll have that on in the background. Gives me a Christmas mood. Plus, since I don't really know the lyrics or really what they're singing, I'm not paying attention to the lyrics, so it's just beautiful noise in the background. Let's see, let me scrape in some darks, and I've run out already, so yeah, let me make some more. I'm gonna keep this green over here clean, but I'm gonna make some more of that deep green. Just a little bit more red. I've realized it doesn't take as much red darken as I thought. Although it takes more than what I just put in. There we go. If it doesn't match it exactly, that's all right. It's close. And if it wasn't, you know, it's good to have some different colors throughout your painting. So yeah, these would be the shadow areas of these beautiful large pines. Paint these shadow. I'll paint these um, shapes bigger than they need to be. So I can always correct them later with lighter paint. I typically typically like to paint lighter on top of darker paint. So I like to get my darker paint established first. I want to get that sharp edge on the right. I just have to take the knife, the sharp edge there, and go there. And look at that beautiful sharp edge I got. Beautiful. The knife's a, an extremely versatile tool. It really is. Well, since I got this dark green, am I? No, I'm not. I was gonna put do some of this bunting, but no, it's a little bit early. I'm early. I'm gonna add that in a little bit later. But I'm gonna do some more of the some shadows of the green, but I'll lighten this up a little bit. I'm gonna add some yellow.
I'm avoiding the white for as long as possible. As soon as you start using white, it starts to, sometimes it can infect your other colors and make them too milky. So I try to avoid it for as long as possible. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice green. background there and I'll use this for the, for the shadow for these greens here. And yeah, using this knife again to establish that hard roof line. Beautiful. And the side of the house here. And I can always use it for the tree here. Both sides. Look how that's already given me the two sides of the tree there, the edges there. And in the photo, there's no green trees back there, but I'm gonna alter it a little bit and put some there. Establish this roof line. And same with this one here. All right, so you can already see how roof line is already being defined. Beautiful. So let's see what now. How about the, um, let's get some of the the shadows of. Let's see. We could do maybe say some of these trees. The shadows. It's a. Uh, everyone thinks trees are brown, but they're not. You look at it and. Where the sun is hitting in here, it looks like it's a yellowish, almost a like greenish gray, and then the shadow side looks like a purplish green almost. So, I want to start off maybe with like a, almost like a purple. I shouldn't say almost, it will be, I'm going to make a grayish purple. So I mixed the, just the ultramarine blue and that red. And I'm getting a purple. So I'll add a little bit of this brown and what this brown will do is gray down that purple. It's getting a little too brown. Let me add some more blue. And I'm just, even though I took, I want to stick, well, no, I'm going to stick with that. I was going to add some white, but I'll hold off. Let's, let's establish the shadow side of this tree in front. And again, look what, you just go to that side and just kind of establish that edge. I want to keep it thin. Keep the shadows the thickness of the paint thin for these shadows. Save the thick paint for like the lighter colors. But yeah, looks, I already got it established. This tall post here and there's like a branch here. It's totally in shadow. I'll scrape that in there. There's some up in here. that to the trunk. Another one over here. And 
And let's see, let's get some on this side here. Because some of these branches are connected to it are in shadow. See how I'm taking on that on the side, going to upper part and then scraping down. That is defining the edge beautifully. Look at that. All right, this is fun. And you can even pull to get like, to indicate some of these thinner lines as well. As long as you got paint on the knife, otherwise nothing's gonna come off of it. Some of it. All right, all right. It's a tree here. goes in front of that greenway, so I'll put the dark right in front of this green. So you can see what I'm doing. I don't know if I'll make you listen to me talk for that long. Who wants to listen to me talk that long? So what I think I'll do is just continue blocking it in and I'll do it, I'll speed it up so you can watch me paint super, super fast, but in peace and quiet. You don't have to listen to me talk.
If you stuck around to the end, will you get to hear me talk one last time for the this session? It's mostly blocked in. Um, I know it's starting to get like real dark on me, and it was hard for me to see how everything was going on and if the pictures and the val the colors and the values were working. So then I started putting in some of the light areas, and that that's helping me a lot into the determining and actually seeing the picture and seeing the light that everything's working out. I didn't put the snow everywhere yet because I want to fill this in with some more of the shadow colors. I didn't do it before because it was just it was just getting too dark and too confusing for me. But yeah, maybe I'll put in some of the shadow color, or maybe I won't. Maybe I will fill it in with um, the snow color and then just add the shadow colors after. I'll see how I feel tomorrow when I look at this with a fresher eye. Um, the sky is mostly in. You probably noticed I, you know, I, I did a basic blue in the middle, then I lightened it more towards the horizon and darkened it as it goes farther up into the sky. And then where it met with the trees, I tried to soften the edges so I could make those trees look farther back. Um, that's all I think I'm gonna work on it for tonight. I'll come to it tomorrow with a fresher eye. Um, I hope you liked it. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel and have a good night. And if you're interested, I'm going to continue with the next part tomorrow. Thanks.